Fallout 3 has a handful of DLCs that all come with their own unique weapons. Some useful, others less so. But what if you wanted to use the first weapon you were given for the entire DLC? In today's video, we'll be finding out if you can beat the pit using only the Auto Axe. After getting released from my fleshy prison, I chose to be a girl, gave myself an appropriate name, and made my way through the tutorial, choosing 9 strength since the Auto Axe was a melee weapon, and 6 luck for a slight boost in all skills. For the first time ever, Butch didn't want to eat my sweet roll. I inevitably killed the Radroach and took the goat. Kind of. Outside the vault I hit level 2, increasing explosives to 25, and melee weapons to 43, also choosing the Swift Learner perk. Now, before heading off to meet Werner, there was a couple of things I wanted to do first because, before entering the train tunnel and using the cart to travel to Pittsburgh, I would have to buy the slaves from the pit raiders for 600 caps. I didn't have that kind of money, being the fresh faced vault dweller that I was, so I had to make some. After travelling to Megaton and convincing Lucas Sims to give me 500 caps, I already had the majority of the money I needed, and hit level 3 after disarming the bomb, increasing melee weapons to 50 and medicine to 33, also choosing the Black Widow perk. The other 100 caps needed came from trading with the local merchants. Before leaving town, I grabbed the strength bobblehead, increasing my own strength to 10, went to my new house, spoke to Wadsworth, and got him to give me all the purified water he could. With that, my time in Megaton was done. The journey to the radio tower was going smoothly until I got to the area near the trio of satellites inhabited by raiders. The raiders weren't the problem. It was the five vicious dogs that wouldn't leave me alone. They did more damage than I thought they would, and if it wasn't for the raiders distracting them, I have no doubt that I would have died. Luckily, it didn't come to that, and I was soon watching while Werner dealt with the pit raiders. With the raiders taken care of, Werner explained that he needed me to go to a place called the pit and retrieve a cure rumored to prevent the mutations plaguing the industrial city and its inhabitants. With his story told, I agreed, but first I would need a disguise. Fortunately, a group of pit raiders were nearby and just so happened to be selling slaves. At first, Ramsey was a little suspicious. Apparently, he was supposed to be meeting a guy, but the Black Widow perk took care of that. With 600 less caps to my name, I told the slave to give me his clothes. Lost karma, which is just ridiculous, I mean, I've just saved you. With a disguise acquired, I travelled with Werner to Pittsburgh, got attacked, hid until the shooting was over, looted the bodies, and was told that all I had to do was cross the bridge and hand myself in. Sounds easy enough. But trying to avoid vicious dogs, radiation, and sniper fire, all while disarming frag mines and bear traps, is pretty far from easy. On the other side of the bridge, I swore to get revenge, watched a group of escaping slaves explode, tried to loot them, almost died, took a nap, and voluntarily became a slave. You're lucky I don't fucking paste you. Inside the pit, I hit level 4, increasing melee weapons to 68, also choosing the second rank of the Swift Learner perk. After getting a good look at my new life, I met Werner's contact, Medea, who told me she had a plan to get me close to the cure, but in the meantime, I would have to keep a low profile by doing a job that's not only dangerous, but a job that people rarely return from. I mean, if I return, aren't people going to be talking about it? Before I could question Medea, one of the raiders, Jackson, barged in and told us to get back to work. I think Jackson may have frightened Medea, and I'm not saying that she farted, but she might have farted. It always smells like that in here. Before I started work, I looted the room for any food, checked out the slop shop where they may have been serving people, and found Marco who provided me with an auto axe, a steel grinder converted into a weapon using scrap from old car parts. With this, I could finally attack, and just in time too, 
because I had to go into the steel yard in search of steel ingots. Ten of them. Everett gave me the rundown, introduced the trogs, and told me that if I was gonna die, then to do it close to the door so he could loot my body. In the steel yard, I saw a slave trying to speak to a trog, who he thought was his brother Billy. If he is or was, depending on how you look at it, the trog didn't care and started attacking. I was eager to claim my first kill and did so in record time. You may have noticed that the auto axe has turned invisible. This is a common occurrence when using the axe, but it can be easily fixed by deselecting and reselecting the weapon. Getting 10 steel ingots really doesn't take that long. In truth, you only really need to get 7 because on your way back inside, the trogs have broken through the fence, and on the other side are three more. Handing these into Everett, he gave me some slightly better armor, I returned to Medea, and Asher gave a speech, also announcing that the arena would be opening, an event where those wanting to fight for their freedom could go and test their mettle. This was a part of Medea's plan. If I were to succeed, then I would be free free to join Asher's army, and be one step closer to the cure. With my auto axe in hand, I went to the arena, met Phaedra, and stepped into my first fight against the other scabs. The gates opened, radioactive barrels dropped from the ceiling, and I got sick. I also attacked their faces, and became the champion of the first fight. Outside the arena, Phaedra removed my rads, which I found to be out of character, why should she care if I'm sick or not? With no time to ponder, I drank some water and stepped into the arena for my second fight. This time it was John and Grud Bear, two brothers so ferocious they're rumored to be half trog. With no time wasted, I went straight for John, seemed to do no damage while taking ample amounts, ran away, this time attacking Grud. He died rather sharpish, complaining about his lung. I then healed because I was close to not living, hearing the dreaded heartbeat. I ate everything, even the slop, and then attacked John. He was so close to dying, a sliver of health remaining, when the game crashed. <sighs> I reloaded, attacked John with my invisible axe, switched targets, killed Grud, ate slop, fixed the glitch, and this time I was able to kill John without the game crashing. JB had been wearing the Gamma Shield armor, so that became mine, and I left the arena to heal. This was it. I was only one fight away from freedom. The only thing standing between me and the cure was Gruber, an ex-slave who not only won his freedom, but continues to fight in the arena as the number one fighter. This should be good. Never mind. Once again, single enemies aren't really an issue when wielding weapons that cripple limbs quickly. That stagger pretty much seals the deal, and the fight is over before it's even begun. And that's it. I'm no longer a slave. Outside the arena, Crenshaw congratulated me, then said Asher wanted to see me. Phaedra went back to hating me, so I collected my things I was carrying before they were confiscated, and went uptown to Asher's ivory tower, known as Haven. After Asher was done yelling at Jackson, he told me that Werner used to be his second in command, and after confessing that I knew who Werner was, I said I was willing to join Asher's army. That seemed to go down well. He then left to attend to some business, directing me to Sandra in the other room, who would show me the cure. In short, the cure is a baby, Asher's and Sandra's baby, to begin with, I left the child where it was and left Haven, meaning my decision to side with the raiders was settled. It was on my way to find out where Werner was from Medea that I realized that the slaves really didn't stand a chance against the raiders. It was simply put, too easy. So I reloaded, shaved the inside of Sandra's skull and stole the baby. This time things were much harder. When they're on their own, it's not a problem, but that's the thing, pit raiders never are. There's always more than three, 
and as you'll soon see, their weapon of choice seems to be either a sniper rifle or a scoped 44 Magnum, both powerful and very annoying weapons to deal with. Outside Haven, I sought refuge behind a wall and planned to systematically attack anything that came around the corner. Before the first raider had fallen, I received a warning. My weapon's condition was getting low. If I could hold out long enough to find a fallen slave and grab one of their weapons to repair my own, things would be okay. If not, well, we'll worry about that if it happens. Squill died, Crenshaw died, Vakia died, those less worthy of a name also died, and I hit level 5, increasing melee weapons to 88 and choosing the Little Leaguer perk, increasing melee weapons a further 5 points to 93. I took buff out and the revolution waged on, with raiders falling but more importantly, slaves falling, meaning I could repair my weapon and focus on getting out of here alive. After heading down a dead end, Duke and a pit raider who seemed to have understood the raw power of the auto axe tried to kill me. They lost, so did Phantom and O-Dog too, and it was while watching three slaves kill a raider the game crashed again. <sighs> Luckily, I had quick saved after killing Phantom, so it wasn't a huge loss. After playing Fallout 3 for over a decade, the action of quick saving becomes second nature. But I was still mad, so I took my anger out on Lulu, O-Dog yet again, and caught some Zs in a queen-size bed. And oh boy, did I feel like a queen. After returning to downtown, the raider forces seem to double in strength, and this is where every raider within a five mile radius tried to kill me. I started collecting the enemy's weapons just in case others picked them up and started using them against me. With a bag full of enemy weapons I returned to Medea, showed her the baby who had somehow avoided getting shot and received the location to Werner's hideout in the steel yard. On my way to the steel yard I saw Everett who didn't much mind the slaves rebelling, nor did they mind him. Perfect harmony as it should be. The trogs in the steel yard were no more of a threat than a feral ghoul, and it wasn't long until I was face to face with Werner, where I handed over Maria, that's the baby's name, I forgot to mention, and headed off to the power plant to complete the final step of the plan. You see, trogs are extremely photosensitive, meaning they'll avoid lights at all cost, unless they're attacking the player, because logic. But with this knowledge, Werner's plan was to turn off the lights in the Haven and Uptown area, flooding them with trogs and effectively killing any raiders still there. Or at least that's what we're going to do for him. With a key we can access the sewers beneath the pit, kill wave after wave of trogs, deal with this awful trap and this one, and shut off the power. The one problem with this plan is that our exit is also in Uptown meaning we not only witness the lights go off, but then we have to make our way through the streets and rooftops with the invading trogs. Also, if Asher isn't dead yet, he'll be here, and if left alone, he'll be overrun by trogs. I prefer to take him out myself, trogs included, and fled uptown, leaving the raiders to perish. Downtown, Werner was waiting patiently, thanked us for everything we'd done, gave us the booster shot perk, and access to the ammo press. 
The run is sort of over at this point, the main quest for the pit has been completed, but it just doesn't feel right to end the run here. Plus, there was something I had been meaning to do. After leaving Werner, I hit level 6, increasing melee weapons to 100 and medicine to 41, also choosing the Bloody Mess perk. With that done, I left the area and dealt with the guards at the city's entrance, almost dying and having to jump and use vats to get up top, similar to the locker and the radroach in the fist only challenge. And then of course I returned to the dreaded bridge, got some well-deserved revenge, and returned to the capital wasteland. So to answer the question, can you beat the pit using only the auto axe? Yes, yes you can. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.